Most of my config labs don't use scripted steps, but this one does. So in this video, I'm going to work through all those scripted steps. But in the voiceover, I'm going to tell you the why and wherefore behind these steps as to how it reveals how config mode really works. Let's do it. So let me set up the context for the lab. The name of the lab is CLI Exploration 2. It's about config mode. Here's the direct link to the lab. And because it's an unusual config lab, there's really not much of a setup for scenario and tasks at the top. So I don't have an intro video, but I do have this new lab review video. And it's me demonstrating the steps, as I mentioned. Now, it's about config mode, which is covered in the current version of the books in Volume 1, Chapter 4, Section 2. Over time, the books might change and the content might be in another chapter, so I'll try to update the title of this video to refer to that correct chapter. At the end of the title, you'll find a reference to the volume, chapter, and section, so you can find it if you want some deeper material on that. All right, so what do we have here in this video? Well, it's six sections to match the six sections of the lab. So it's getting to config mode, checking out four different modes in config mode, submodes, and then investigating the config files. Now, you could just stop this video and do the lab. Ignore the video, that would be fine. You'd learn a lot. You could also ignore doing the lab, and I do the lab. I'm going to demo it here in this video. You could watch along, but it's probably better if you do some of it. So we could both do it. You could open up the lab and Packet Tracer and get going on it and watch the video and go back and forth, and you might learn a little bit from both perspectives doing it that way. All right, let's get into seeing a demo of the lab. Welcome to Cisco Package Tracer. I don't have any files open yet. It's a nice empty canvas. I can start designing by dragging routers and switches up to the top. But what I want to do for this demo is to open the Package Tracer file that you would have downloaded from the blog page. And I've already done that and put it in a folder. So I'm just going to go open that. So file open. And I'm looking for the folder where I saved it, my YouTube demo files. And here's the CLAB 402 file that I downloaded. And I'm going to magnify it a little bit, make it a little bit bigger for you to see in the video. And per the lab steps, it basically says to move with some directness, just open up things and try to get over to global configuration mode, assuming that you know how to do that from prior learning. So we're going to click on the switch icon, and I'm going to make this new window open up a little bit bigger to make things format a little better. And you may have opened up in physical mode. That's the default tab if you left Packet Tracer settings alone. But I've set up Packet Tracer to immediately open up the CLI tab because I'm usually working in the CLI. In order to use the CLI tab, don't forget, you've got to point the mouse pointer in here and click once. And now your enter key will work. I'm already in user mode. Notice the prompt ends in a greater than sign. That means user exec mode. I type the enable command. I don't have a password set up. I might have had to type an enable password, which gets me to privilege mode, indicated by the hashtag at the end of the prompt. And then the last step in this first section is to type the configure terminal command, which literally means, hey, configure this here device from this here terminal. And now we're in global configuration mode, which is indicated by the word config at the end of the prompt but not config dash something else. And you're going to see that demonstrated in the next bit. And let me check. Yep, that's it for the section one of the lab. Now to section two. This next bit of the demo is much easier to understand if you have the blog page open. So it's searchskills.com slash CLAB402 if you don't have it open already. But if you open up the console for the device and you're in config mode, you're in global config mode, the first thing it asks you to do is change the host name to your name or my name or whoever's name you want to do just to prove out that when you change the host name with this host name command, that the config is taken and acted on immediately. Notice the prompt changes to Wendell instead of SW1, showing that the config has changed, all right? Now, it turns out that hostname command I just used there per the lab, it's a, quote, global config command, meaning that it's an appropriate command to use in global config mode, all right? Seems reasonable so far, right? But what I've done in this lab is I've got four commands that I'll use repeatedly in this section of the lab in the next few to point out the differences in modes. 
So that's why I'd want you to have the lab open if it's convenient for you. The other commands are description, password, and name, and they're not going to work in global config mode. In fact, if I try the description command, which the lab says to do, and just press enter, it says, ah, invalid command, and password, invalid command, and name, invalid command. Although those are valid configuration mode commands, there are sub-modes in config mode. So you've got to navigate to the correct mode to use the command. And then for some of them, you need to give them additional parameters and things like that. So we're going to do that in the next several sections, see how we make those commands work. In fact, just to cap this off, here in global config mode, if I type the question mark and I look for help with description, which should be at the top in the Ds, right? None of the Ds show description. Uh, name would be next letter-wise, so we don't get any help in the ends here with the command name. And then password would be ne next here in the Ps. There's no password command, so all three of those commands that were rejected, they're not listed here in the help output either. Next up in lab, we're going to talk about interface mode, which may be the most popular mode other than global config mode that you'll use in a router or switch. So if we get back to the console and we type the command suggested, the command is interface, and it shows a shorthand of G101, but I'm going to spell it out gigabit, ethernet, 1 slash 0 slash 1 and press enter, and notice the prompt changes. It now says config-if, and I'm going to hit the enter key five or six times just to get a few more on the screen so it's easier to see. And that di uh, dash if is there to tell you you're in interface mode for some interface. It doesn't tell you which interface. It's just some interface on this device. You'd have to scan back up to see which interface based on your previous command. Now, I could have typed interface gig 101. In fact, I could have typed something shorter. You can abbreviate these commands with the fewest number of letters that doesn't confuse the parser in the command line. That is int. There are no other commands that start int in that mode, so it would take int g. There are no other interface types that start with g, with g other than gigabit ethernet. So you can abbreviate where you can. So you'll get used to those abbreviations over time. All right, so now you're in interface config mode, and you can type commands that are, quote, interface config commands. Now, what does that mean? There are commands that only have meaning in the context of an interface. All right? So if you press the question mark key, you'll get a list of those and some help. And one of those is the description command that's from our list of test commands we're using in this lab. And so the description command is a way for you to leave um, basically documentation about what the interface is used for. And that's what we've got in the lab here to show an interface command. So description, and let's see. I think I've got you configuring connected to PC1. That seems like an appropriate thing to want to keep track of, what it's connected to, what's on the other end of the cable, and that's great. Now, the other commands that I set us up for were uh, password and something else, right? So password and name. So if we were to try password and name, they were commands that I knew weren't interface subcommands. So some commands are interface mode commands, and other commands like name and password are useful in other modes, and we haven't gone over those yet. And that's the point of using those in the lab, so you can see that they may not work in a certain mode. So you've got to get used to these different modes and what commands are valid there, and you can use the question mark to remind yourself of what's valid in each mode, and it's just something that you'll learn with experience. Now, once you're done with interface config mode for this interface, you can navigate back to global config mode with the exit command. That moves you back one level. Watch the prompt. I'm hitting enter now. Now you're back to global config mode with the global config mode prompt. Next up, we've got section four of the lab. So if we get back over to the console for switch one, we're in global config mode and section four of the lab says we're gonna investigate the console line. So each of these devices has a console. You can hook up a console cable to your laptop, say, to get access to the device. 
and these devices number the console as line number zero. So the command you use to get into console line config mode is line console zero. So it's numbered zero. Watch the prompt change. I'm hitting enter now. Boom. There we go. So it's config dash line. It doesn't tell you which line, just that it's some line. There are other lines as well, but console zero is one of those. So you're in console config mode. Different commands are supported here. So if I hit the question mark to get help, if I remembered all the help I got in interface mode, those would be different commands than what you see here. So if we think about our favorite four commands that we've been using, hostname, description, password, and name, well, hostname is not in here, and name is not in here. Password is, it's right here. Set a password, right? And uh, I guess description is the other one. It's not in here. So of those four, when I made this lab, I said, all right, we're going to let you configure a password. In fact, the lab suggests that you use that. In fact, it's password and another one. So it even says, uh, let's make the password lowercase Cisco, which means when you log in from the console or when you connect to the console, this device is going to require a password of Cisco. And there's an associated command called login, which means supply a prompt for a password. So login says supply the password. Password Cisco says the password that's required of the user when they see the prompt is Cisco. And just for fun, let's uh, let's try the name command here. Name Wendell22. We'll use that in the next section of lab. And it's rejected. The name command is not valid in this particular config mode, in console line config mode. So it gets rejected, but it will be allowed in the next config mode. Now, in Section 5 of the lab, we're going to get into VLAN configuration mode on the switch. So we're back at the console, and notice that the command prompt still says config-line. We're still in console line configuration mode, as it turns out. But you don't have to use the exit command to move back to global config mode before moving into VLAN config mode. That's always true. You can move from one sub-mode to the next just by using a command that says, go to a sub-mode. So the VLAN command says go to the VLAN configuration submode. So we'll use the VLAN command, and the lab says use the VLAN 22 command. So it says navigate to the VLAN submode, and also we want to create a VLAN whose ID is 22. There you go. Now notice the length of the prompt is the same, but I'm going to hit the enter key a few times. It ends in config-VLAN now, so we've moved to a new type of configuration submode, the VLAN submode. So if I hit the question mark key right now and get help, <laughs> there's not much there. So it's easy to scan and see that there's no reference to a hostname command or description command or password command, but there is a name command second in there, and it's the ASCII name of the VLAN. All right, so if we would like to name the VLAN something clever, like the one I tried just a few moments ago, but was rejected in console line config mode, like Wendell 22, oops, boom, it's taken now, right? So again, commands that are perfectly valid in one mode are rejected in the other. So you have to get used to this idea of knowing which commands are valid in which modes and, you know, global config mode or which sub mode, so you can navigate around to those. Now, when you're tired of configuring, you can type exit repeatedly until you get out completely, or the end command moves you all the way back to privileged exec mode, as you see there. Now we're totally out of config mode. Honestly, this last section is a bit laborious to demonstrate, but we'll give it a try, all right? So here's the deal. We've got a running config file that's the active configuration and a startup config file that's used next time the device boots. So if we do the show running config exec command that works in privilege but not user mode, so we're in privilege mode, and we look around, let's look for what you just configured or what I configured and you saw me configured, or what you would have configured if you followed the lab. So near the top, there's hostname Wendell, and I know it's going to be at the top because of experience. It's not organized in the order you typed it. It's organized in the way that the people at Cisco decided over many decades. All right, They just happened to put the hostname command toward the top. They put some of the others in the middle and some of the others at the end. All right, So let's look around for some more 
Uh, let's see. Nothing new there from what we just configured. Look around a little more. Hey, there's our VLAN 22 and name command right there. And then just below it, we've got the description that says connected to PC1 that we typed just a few moments ago, or I typed in the demo. Got a few other artifacts from things that were configured prior. And then let's see, I think the console's down here. We've got the login and password Cisco command that we typed. So by the nature of the running config file, all those commands we typed after typing configure terminal to get into config mode showed up in the running config file. Conversely, we haven't done anything to save the running config to the startup config file yet. So if we do a show startup config command now, none of those things should show up here. So the hostname command does not say Wendell. It shows the old host name of SW1. If we look around here, we don't see any VLAN 22. If we look under that gigabit interface, it looks like we have some leftover config. It looks like I had already configured that description from a prior time. Maybe I should clean that up, huh? Uh, if we look further down here, we don't have a login and password command under console zero. So none of that configuration has been saved. So I believe we ask you in the, yes, we do, in the lab to use this command, copy running config startup config. And this command, if I press enter to take the, to say the answer, yes, I really want to copy to startup config says, okay, it's copied the file. So that overwrote the startup config. Now they should be exactly the same. So if I now do a show startup config and we scan, we can see the hostname command hitting the space bar. Looking down, we see the VLAN 22 and name Wendell 22. We see the same old description. And we see the password and login commands down there. All right, so we just confirmed that the copy command worked correctly. So now we're all set for the next time we lose power or we reload. Of course, this is a simulator. We're not going to lose power unless we purposely turn off the computer. But to you know do the equivalent of that, let's use the reload command. And I'm going to press Enter to answer that confirm in the brackets means, hey, if you press Enter, I'm going to confirm that. And it's going to simulatedly um, reload the router. It doesn't take long, maybe 15 seconds, and the router will be back. And then we can look at the show run and see if it kept things. Yep, there it is. Whoops. Got a console password now of lowercase Cisco. Enable to get into privilege mode. And the lab asks us to do another show running config and see if our config indeed appears. That is, let's confirm that it was saved in the startup config and got copied into running config upon reload. And what do you know? There's hostname Wendell. There's our VLAN 22 and name Wendell 22. And there's our login and password command down there under the console. Hope you found that to be a useful exercise. If you're ready to learn the next new thing, it's time to move on to the next chapter. You can learn about land switching concepts, and that first video is linked on the left side of the screen now. But if you want a little more review, you can check out a similar demonstration of a lab on the right. That one's about navigating around the different modes in the CLI. So click that one. Hey, thanks for hanging out. We'll talk to you soon.